Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and this week we've got a double serving for the Rust stations amongst us. Earlier on, we talked about how Godot 4 just got uh, Rust programming support via the GD extensions, and today we are talking about the Bevy game engine, which you can see running in front of you with the most important graphical setting ever, which is Bloom. Now, actually, Bloom is uh, its a way of simulating the, the flare around light, as you can see in action in this demo. Uh, Bloom is one of those wonderful things that can be so easily abused. It kind of reminds me of lens flares. When people overdo it, you can really ruin the effect, but Bloom can look really good. And this is part of the new uh, HDR post-processing stack, which enabled them to add Bloom support to the engine. Uh, but there is a bunch more to this particular release. Now, if you've never heard of Bevy before, it is available at bevyengine.org. Uh, it is an open source game engine slash framework uh, for Rust. It's part of the new generation of engines that built on the earlier, more complex and somewhat dead engines, such as Amethyst. Uh, now we have Bevy and you have uh, Rage, which is now called Firox, probably the two most prominent uh, game engines for the Rust environment. Uh, Bevy is nice in that it's clean and simple, straightforward, it's data-driven, it's ECS-driven. Uh, it didn't try to over-engineer things like some of the earlier Rust engines did. It's just a straightforward, nice platform to work with. Tons of examples out there. Obviously, it is entirely open source. Uh, there's 2D rendering, 3D rendering, a render graph, which is fully configurable and modular. It is cross-platform, being major desktop platforms plus web with Android and iOS in the works. There is a UI layer. The UI layer just moved the origin to the top left corner, which is the way it should be. Uh, Scene's got an update in this as well. Uh, so there's no tooling here yet, but there's all the stuff in place to make that tooling work. And one of the things in Bevy 0.9 release is they added this... Um, uh, new format, new simpler, cleaner, streamlined format for scenes, as well as a binary format, which is going to be more performant. Now, after that, we also have sound management, hot reloading, uh, fast compile times. It is free and open source under the MIT or the Apache 2 license. Again, if you want to check it out, bevyengine.org. Now, what we're talking about it today, because 0.9 was just released a couple of days back, and we're just going to take a look top level at what those new features in 0.9 are. The first one we already demonstrated is the new Bloom effect. This is built on the HDR post processing, uh, and the new post processing pipeline in place, also tone mapping pipeline. Uh, so the Bloom effect is part of that new uh, pipeline that they've implemented. Uh, we've also got FXAA, so for full screen fast, appro it was fast approximated anti-aliasing. Um, it's basically a faster, cheaper option for doing full screen uh, anti-aliasing than the other options that are out there. Uh, D-band dithering, so you can hide gradient precision errors with this new post-processing effect. Again, another part of that post-processing stack. Uh, we also have view uh, target double buffering, automatic target rendering format. The, there is the new scene format. They show some examples down below. Uh, smaller, simpler, easier to read. Uh, there's also a binary variant of it. So if you need performance over human readability, that option exists as well. Uh, Code-driven scene construction, so you can build scenes dynamically from an existing app using queries and specific entity references. So this is going to be useful, obviously, when you get into the tooling side of things, or if you've got a fully procedural game. Uh, improvements to the entity component system, uh, exclusive system rework, so exclusive systems, systems with unique ECS world access are now just normal systems with significantly improved usability. Uh, enums can now be reflected, time shader globals, plugin settings have now, uh, plugins can now have settings which can be overridden in plugin groups, uh, making it simpler to do plugin configuration. Uh, and the UI Z indices uh, control how UI elements stack on top of each other using local and global Z indices. So get more detail of all these things. Obviously, you do have the new bloom effect. We saw it in the example earlier on. Here is how you go about controlling it. Again, you can easily overdo bloom. So take a very light hand when it comes to uh, bloom effects. Again, we got that new faster anti-aliasing. Um, so compared to MSAA, it should be a, a fair bit faster, maybe not quite as nice results. Um, so quite a bit nice in this actual release. Uh, here is the new format. Uh, so it's just kind of cleaned up a bit. We've got side by side. So here is the old format and the way it worked. So it, it was much more verbose. Uh, so we've got the old structure system versus the new structure system. So you can see how uh, the new syntax is definitely a lot cleaner and easier to work with. Should make tool makers actually a little bit nicer as well. So a lot of improvements across the board on that whole um, scene format, which is a good thing. Um, 
And then we got the new uh, binary scene format as well. So if you don't need to read it, that option is there as well. Dynamic scene building, we talked about earlier on. So there is quite a bit to like in this release. The, the release notes go into a ton more detail of what is actually changed. Uh, but you know what? You can jump into this on your own accord. Now, the nice thing with Bevy in general is there is a solid number of examples to get you up and going. Everything in general about the nice thing with Rust projects is generally compared to, say, C++, it is quite a bit faster to get up and going. This one is an open source project, so the GitHub repository is available. I will have links to all of the relevant things in the article down below. This project is 100% Rust. Uh, if you want to go ahead and get started with it, very simple process. So basically, come on in here and clone this repository right there fire up a terminal window which i guess we will use this one so goodbye bloom all right so in your window we go here and say um i'm gonna make a directory for youtube yt demo go into yt demo and then you're just gonna do a git clone and then paste that repository in. So the step one obviously is to uh, clone the repository down. You can also do the same thing. If you just wanna add support to it, you don't need all the examples and all the other stuff. Uh, you can basically just use cargo, um, create a new project and then cargo add bevy and you're off to the races. You do need to be using a very current version of Rust. Uh, in my case, at this point in time, I am running uh, 1.67 nightly build because there's a lot of uh, the experimental features from the languages are utilized in um, in the framework. Just one of those things to know about using Bevy in general. All right, so we just did that. Go into the Rust directory. Oh, no, no not Rust. Uh, Bevy directory like so. And then just do cargo and then pick whatever you want to do. So, for example, if you want to see that uh, Bloom example, just do uh, car sorry cargo run dash dash example and then Bloom. Like so, and then this is going to use crates to grab all of the various different dependencies, compile everything you need, and then load that example we just looked at. So getting started with, well, really any Rust project is really quite easy, as long as nothing breaks. And if anything breaks, by the way, most likely it is because your current version isn't up to date. Uh, so uh, run Rust up, make sure you're running a different version or current version, make sure you're running the uh, development versions or the experimental versions or the nightly versions, not uh, the, the six point, I think I was running six point, sorry, 1.65 release when I tried this out and it didn't work. So anyways, it's pretty much done. We're gonna go ahead and run the example and then kaboom, done. That, you're up and running with Bevy 0 0.9. So very, very simple. Uh, and you can also, of course, just add bevy via crates with a cargo add bevy to an existing project and you're up and going as well but obviously you're not going to have access to the examples in that case so ladies and gentlemen that is bevy bevy again learn more about it bevyengine.org let me know what you think let me know what you think of the 0 0.9 release in general let me also know what you think of bloom uh, again i'm just a child of the 90s where bloom and lens flares were just so over abused in all cg that i'm very gun shy about either of those effects so uh, that new post process um, HDR pipeline though definitely nice and you saw it enabled a number of new features in this version each new release of Bevy brings quite a bit forward it's a nice framework to check out the code is pretty clean and straightforward I'm not a Rust programmer and I have no trouble uh, kind of understanding what they're doing with it uh, which is not something I could say about Amethyst the engine that came before it so let me know what you think of Bevy uh, of the various different Rust frameworks and I will talk to you all later goodbye